Hello everybody and welcome to Anchor 2016. Now if you've missed your chance to watch this amazing live show from Reeperbahn, don't break out in tears. We got all the big moments for you, haven't we Kylie? We do indeed. It was an absolutely incredible night, wasn't it? It was. We had so much fun. <laughs> And for the very first time ever, the anchor was given to the best international newcomer 2016. And it's all because we love great music with incredible solo artists. We want to support those bands because they give us wonderful music that makes us feel gooey inside. Now, all it took was four nights at the Reeperbahn Festival, eight great new artists, a famous jury of six, and a whole lot of work. But first, let's check out the fantabulous Anchor Show. the show and in that spirit welcome to anchor 2016 it's great to have you all with us at the incredible st pauli theater in hamburg now the whole world is watching the world premiere of anchor <laughs> gosh we had so much fun on stage so many talented artists you must be dying to find out who the winner is and you'll find out soon enough. Yes, indeed you will. But before we reveal the exciting news, let's share the Reaper Barn Festival with you and the story behind the anchor and how it came about. Oh my God, my brain is starting to shut down. <laughs> let's hit the street, people. Hey ladies, can I ask you um, what you love about music? Everything. Everything. <laughs> it's a great festival. And we hadn't rehearsed that. It's just great to experience live music. Sometimes it makes you feel very happy if you just like the song. Sometimes it reminds you of something from your past, maybe. Music is my life. You see it at my tattoos here. And I love the feeling when I hear music, um, everything is fine. <laughs> Why do I love live music? Because it's live. That's I mean, it. does that say everything about it? How do you see a difference in people after they've watched or experienced music live? <laughs> they are sweaty. <laughs> Turn up the music! Give us some vibes! It's an ass. Oh my god, we're allowed to go into Titty Twister! This is the Reaper Barn! Come on, follow me! We're in Titty Twister, but there's no titties! Bye, tschüss! And I remember that it, the whole festival had a really good vibe to it. So I'm happy to be back. I think this may be the fourth time that I've been here. It's one of my favorite festivals. The festival is like one of the coolest, sorry, but it's one of the coolest festivals in Europe. So I'm just really proud that we're turning this whole thing to an award thing because I think it's cool because this is music in real time and right now. The Ripperbond Festival itself is a kind of presentation platform for its years. And there is people from the music business, there are artists and fans as well. And of course, in a way, people and musicians are already competing. Um, for new contracts and deals and fans and so on. 
but at this point we wanted to establish something which is uh, puts it all in a nutshell. We thought it was could be wise to establish something like this brand Anchor. The Anchor! Thank you, finally! That's more like it. This is the first award which is ex exciting to be a part of and then to watch it hopefully grow. It's a nice idea that it's actually in a music festival, um, which, you know, like the Berlin Isle or the, the film festivals, like the Cannes Film Festival, they're actually in competition when they're there. So that's a nice, a nice idea. I like that idea. And that the bands are playing and that people can actually go and see them and then we get to vote for them. It's uh, people that are involved with music that look at music. That feels special about this, so. I mean, it's a sort of a more independent award <laughs> that I like. The special thing about the Anchor Award is, is that it does recognize young emerging, emerging talent. And if you win the Anchor Award, or you even come in second place, I think that's going to help you get further in your career. So I think anything, anything I can be a part of to help young emerging talent, I will do this for, because it's my future as well. Years from now, when I turn on the radio, I'd like to maybe hear someone who won the Anchor Award on the radio. I really like that approach. Not just like, yay, award, <laughs> bye, poof, <laughs> and you have a statue. <laughs> it's more than that. Don't forget that you're on the stage and the people in the audience are not on the stage. You're on the stage for a reason, and that's because you are very good. So just keep that in mind. So if you've never been here at the festival, you definitely have to come next year. Hundreds of unknown shining diamonds. It really is all about music and discovering new bands. I'll tell you what, it certainly wasn't easy. Oh my God. But from all of these fantastic artists, eight of them were chosen to go home with the potential of winning that anchor. Here are the nominees. Come from England, Sweden, Germany, the USA, Australia, and the Faroe Islands. Young and hungry for more. For instance, for the anchor and a career in the music biz. From the 21st to the 24th of September, they'll be in music competition with each other for the Anchor 2016. And I'm also really happy to see all our nominees here. The expectant, I mean, it's really true. They have no idea who's going to win. They don't know whether he or, or, or she or they will uh, leave this theatre with a winner's smile on their faces. So, um, yeah, tension's rising. So, um, yeah, let's start the presentation and the introduction of our nominees. And uh, first is a young lady from Brighton. She played at the Molotov on Thursday and had her audience spellbound. Nominated for Anchor 2016, Holly McVie. Holly McVie. 20 years old and from the north of England. Less city, more countryside. Holly comes from a musical household. Less monopoly, more jam sessions full of Irish folk songs. As a young girl, she sat herself down at the piano and started playing. At 10, she switched to guitar because it's easier to carry. Her voice is unique, pierces your heart, full of melancholy and mystery. It's filled with yearning and yet is full of power, reminiscent of Rufus Wainwright. But who needs comparisons? We'd prefer just to say what springs to mind spontaneously. Longing, range, depth brings you to your knees. And for a moment, time seems to stand still. We want more. And we don't.
Holly McVie, delicate poet, powerful folk singer. Last year, Holly McVie started performing in bars in Brighton. When she started singing, even the loudest, booziest revelers fell silent and rapt attention. For good reason, and that's just the beginning. Holly McVie, nominated for the Anchor 2016. I'm really honored to be nominated. It's the first thing I've ever really been like, you know, nominated for something official like this. So it's really special and um, exciting as well, yeah. mesmerizing there so we go from the UK to Berlin the current choice of residence for these next guys now they grew up in Byron Bay Australia and they played Molotov on Friday night apparently they had so much fun that we couldn't get them off the stage now nominated for anchor 2016 is parcels <laughs> Parcels. Five lads from the sunnier side of the world. Byron Bay, a party surfer hippie paradise in New South Wales, Australia. Louis, Patrick, Noah, Anatole and Jules needed a very good reason to leave that place. And that reason is music. So fired up. Take a seat. They book a one-way ticket to Europe's hub of musical inspiration or in their words, to the post-apocalyptic ruined place, Berlin. And the lads, take a look around and stay. It's almost as cozy as Australia. Another clock, it's upsetting it. It's upsetting my soul. Oh. Besides their passion for music, they have a weakness for, well, they probably wouldn't call it a weakness, long, non-frizzy, 70s style hair. With their relaxed, chilling sound that comes across like a cool surfer wave, they're not only filling the streets of the German capital with music. Their world in three words? Disco, electronic, pop. Parcels have successfully transported themselves, their hair, and their music halfway around the world and are nominated for the Anchor 2016. We're so psyched to be nominated for the Anchor Award. Have we started the interview? Funky little 14 year old surf dudes doing some really funky stuff, man. Fantastic fun, really good, and the audience really enjoyed it. It was like Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> Parsons from Australia, where are you? Ah, you simply have to love these guys. So, for our next nominee, we go over to Sweden to a voice that. Um, gives me instant goosebumps. He poured his soul out at the Imperial on Thursday, and he's not only a heartthrob, but also the insider tip from Scandinavia. Nominated for Anchor 2016, Alvin Lee Meldau. <laughs> Alvin Lee Meldau from Gothenburg. He was never any good at football, but he absolutely wanted to be seen. And he wanted girls. What option did he have but to become a pop star? His mother, a jazz singer. His father, a singer-songwriter. 
What choice did he have but to become a musician? At the age of 11, he starts making music. He plays and sings his way through Sweden's back streets, in bars, at weddings, and even funerals. And the last six years in a soul band called Magnolia. In 2015, Albin decides to try his luck and go solo. Good decision, not least because of that voice. Lolo, Lolo, for a minute I made, can't be believing in you. How much yearning, intensity, and longing can one pack into their music? Albin is a bon vivant, doesn't plan anything, is incurably romantic, and as far as we're concerned, he can stay that way. And he's on fire at the moment. Last year he wrote 40 songs. Before he dies, he wants to release at least 16 albums. He doesn't care if he's playing for a thousand people or just one. And that's all that matters. Albin Lee Meldow, nominated for the Anchor 2016. If this was any other thing than music, I would be much more competitive. I do not believe in competing in music, but it's an honor. And uh, if it was like any game, <laughs> I'd be really competitive. Laying in my bed, I need something. Laying in my bed, I feel something. It was like being in someone's living room and you were very welcome. <laughs> He's a genius. Something is pouring out of his heart and soul when he sings. Thank you, Alvin. Wow. Fuck. Unhappy. But I live the story, you know, you needed to live the story. Wow. Well, there's a man who knows what he wants, a little bit like our next nominees. Now, these three guys are really cooking up a storm in their hometown, and it won't be long before the rest of us catch on. Nominated for Anchor 2016, it is Woman. <laughs> A band from Cologne. Just three guys, Carlos, Milan, and Manuel. They live together, play records to each other. Four years ago, the records ran out and the guys got together in a rehearsal room. For a long time, there was nothing. And then, suddenly, the door opens and out comes this cool sound. Their sound? Driving authentic pop. Please give us more of it. Funky guitars, a pinch of soul, and frisky techno dance floor. Music for long, sultry, sexy nights. Anyone who experiences Woman Live will be blown away. The secret to their performances? No concept show but pure passion for playing, playing, and playing. And for that reason, rightly nominated for the Anchor 2016. Well, being a nominee for the Anchor Award is, uh, I think it's great because if you look at the jury, like Tony Visconti and Emiliano Torini, that's some great people we look up to. And it's an honor, really an honor to be here. And um, yeah, we hope we can like um, play a good show and uh, just have fun and enjoy. Unbelievable 
musicianship and really good tunes. And if I was a multi-millionaire, instead of being a poor man, uh, I would invest in them. Thank you. Our next nominees come from the Faroe Islands. Now, you have to give it to the anchor team. They managed to round up some incredible artists from all over the globe. So help me welcome a band with an enchanting front woman who, in her spare time, is training to be a doctor. Nominated for Anchor 2016, it's Connie Cass. They come from the Faroe Islands and plan to conquer the world, not in Viking longships, but with their exceptional pop music. Connie, Pear, Torlike, and Canute are Connie Cass. Everyone knows everyone on the Northern Island, so it's pretty easy to get into a band. Connie Cass invites you on a meditative journey through nature. A powerful soul voice accompanied by jazz arrangements that whiz through the room and collide with retro sounds. Connie Cuss just make great music, and you can only weave such a beautiful, intense sound if you want to conquer the world without long ships, just with exceptional pop music. Live on stage, they are a real temptation to feel good and just let yourself be conquered. Connie Cuss, nominated for the Anchor 2016. I think we're really, really happy about it and honored to be nominated. It's just like already that is a big accomplishment for us because it means that somebody thinks it's what we do is cool um, and it's, it's a great exposure for us as a pretty new band. And I like the parts when the band was kind of minimalistic. Inside this well, the audience were standing up after the show, you know, they seemed to like it. I turned around and people were digging it. It was really, really interesting and a very innovative sound, I thought. So, people. Our next nominee comes from the United States, from Dallas, uh, lives now in Nashville. But his sounds got nothing to do with the Nashville sound or country rock. Quite the contrary, actually. Uh, he's a really impressive one-man show who knows how to capture an audience. Nominated for Anchor 2016, Connor Youngblood. <laughs> Via Texas and Yale and out into the world, accompanied by his expressive voice and his admittedly impressive good looks. Only his dog might look a little better. But the dog hasn't been nominated, only Connor Youngblood and his music. And I know. Which is created here, preferably in the country, miles away from all the hectic music scene junkies and media nerds. Connor writes, composes, and plays all instruments himself. Around 30 or 40, so they say. You could spend ages describing Connor's music in terms of the genre's influences, role models, and anything else that comes to mind. 
We see his music like this, the perfect emergency exit for anyone who's looking for a trip between cool poetry and impressive worlds of sound. A pleasant depth and range oscillate in his songs. You can sense here that a true storyteller is on his journey. Connor Youngblood, a true experience on the stage and nominated for the Anchor 2016. I think the last time I was nominated for anything, it was in high school, my computer science award or something. So I've come a long way. And yeah, it's cool that it's the very first one, the very first Anchor Awards, the first time I've been nominated for anything. So I'll take it. It's, it's awesome. When I heard the news, I was flying. I turned off the tube and decided So let's go back to the island. Everybody knows the Beatles, but also the Sex Pistols, the Clash. The latter two might have been a source of inspiration for the next guys nominated. A young band from South London, so nominated for Anchor 2016, Shame. Shame from South London. Eddie, Charlie, Josh, Sean, and Charlie have known each other since they literally used to shit their nappies. At some point, they swapped their toys for instruments, and since the summer of 2015, have been together as Shame. Already now, the boys are the most watched and the most talked about live band in London. These punch drunk, punk blues teenagers are pub and poetic. Very political, and not in the slightest political. Their sound, deep. Hypnotic, dark, driving, and wild. Shame come over you, and then, boom. They hit each other, they love each other. Typical for a gang of young underdogs, so we like this wild bunch. However, the most important thing is that they make good music, and they do it with an attitude that seems to be inborn for artists made in Britain. Shame don't stand on the stage to stare at their foot pedals. They want to entertain, and that's exactly what the boys did very convincingly at the Repaban Festival. Shame from South London. Dirty, real, loud, and proud. Shame, nominated for the Anchor Award 2016. Really cool. There's a, some great bands as well that have been also nominated for it, really talented artists. It's a new experience, our first of red carpet set. Especially with no <laughs> music out whatsoever. It's kind of creative. Yeah, we're a bit baffled ourselves, but thank you very much. <laughs> Aggressive, sexy, charismatic, uh, yeah, made me dance. It was pretty fucking intense. Really, the audience loved them, but I've seen it all before. That's 
Pretty, real, loud and proud. Woo, that's my kind of neighbour. So the list of nominees is completed by a lady who knows what she wants and does what she wants. Good music. Nominated for Anchor 2016, it is the lovely Olivia Sebastianelli. Olivia Sebastianelli, born in London. She spent a large part of her childhood in her grandfather's Soho restaurant. There she met drag queens, actors, heard good stories, and lots of music. That left its mark. She started singing at eight. Her parents bought her a guitar when she's 13. Cool parents. From that point on, there was only music. She gets her first deal at 17. The record company wants this, but Olivia wants that. Olivia thinks about it for a while and leaves the label. She'd rather do her own thing. Today, Olivia's living her lifestyle thing with impressive pop music and stories that move you. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? We think so. Olivia Sebastianelli, nominated for the Anchor 2016. It's always nice to know that there's people in the world that appreciate what you do because I work so hard so it's just really nice for me and um, I'm, yeah, I'm really honoured to be a part of the whole thing. I think it's a brilliant thing. Now this award isn't about record sales or social media hits, so we really had to find the right kind of people in the music world to make the decision. So do you want to know who they are? These are the members of the jury. Your name and occupation, please. My name is Tony Visconti, and I'm a record producer. My name is Emiliana Torini. I'm a singer-songwriter. My name is Raymond Cokes. My occupation is... No idea. My name is Yakoto and I am a musician, artist, singer. My name is James Minor. I am the head of South by Southwest Music Festival. My name is Anna Turnheim and I am a musician, a songwriter, an artist. Why are you in the Anchor Jury? I'm in the Anchor Jury because I wanted to meet Tony Visconti. I was asked to be in the Anchor Jury. I've never met Tony Visconti and I've always wanted to meet Tony Visconti because when I was 15, uh, 14 years old. When I was 14 years old. I don't know because they called me and asked me and um, I was excited to do it. That's why I'm here. T-Rex was the band that did it and Tony Visconti produced those early albums so he's a hero for me. Good question. Someone asked me. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I have no idea why they asked me to but I'm happy to be here. And of course his connection with David Bowie. So I'm here because I want to meet Tony Visconti. Is Tony Visconti here at all? Have you got any sacred fan item at home? No, I'm not really a fan. I make the record, so I'm, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I've moved so many times. <laughs> and I've been throwing away literally my life. <laughs> I was on MTV when the, um, that was in the 1920s when, well, when television was in black and white. Bjork was living up the road from the TV studios and she gave me this mixtape and I've lost it. So if you find it anywhere, it's mine. Music is... Music is a battle. Music is the most important thing in our lives. Life. Uh, music is the language of the soul. Music is everything.
if you think it's an easy job to find the best international newcomer, absolutely not. Our jury had to work very hard for this. And do you want to see how they worked over the last few days? We'll take a look at this. I don't know much about anyone since before this. I feel excited about all the eight concerts. I think they're just all amazing in their own right and doing their thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go see the acts and then at the end of the night, get together in a group and discuss everything. It's funny, there are a list of criteria which we've been asked to take notice of and I think I'm the, probably the naughtiest boy on the panel so I won't look at any of it really. But then you do have to interact with five other people I was just thinking I could walk in and go, brilliant, rubbish, but I can't. The jury would only judge the, the show they would really see during the Rape Band Festival, but that show would include the, the song material, for example. It's probably going to be a really lively talk, because it's really fun. <laughs> If you want to make good decisions, you have to really, you have to fight sometimes. Music is not work, it's passion, I think. Music means nothing if it doesn't touch you. Sometimes it's hard to pin down what it is that actually makes a concert magical and really good, but, you know, it's the presence of the artist and, you know, to be able to communicate their music live. So I'll use my heart and my gut and see where that takes me. Number one is the talent, you know, number one, two and three. I think the secret key for success is to be original. The structure that existed before seems to have dissipated. Big labels seem to concentrate only on a few acts rather than a couple of hundred, which they really should be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow we have to help these young bands emerge and get recognized, if they're good too. I mean, you know, they have to really be top musicians and great songwriters and singers. In the last five years, record companies and management and talent scouts have been looking, in my opinion, uh, do you look good on a video? You know, do you, can you dance? Can you hold an audience? Uh, I'm hoping that that's coming to an end now and that we're going to go back to the roots because we haven't been able to see those great leaders like the Bowies, the Freddie Mercury's, people like that. We haven't been, they haven't grown because it's not, they're not allowed to anymore. And I think that um, nowadays, if you've got something good, you don't need to go to a label that takes 70% or 100% or of all of your rights. You put it online and you get it out there. So you don't need those. But you do need distribution and you do need help once you get there. So it's really important that there's a body uh, of humans behind with a, with a more humanistic approach to music and artists and culture. Really important. Uh, without culture, we're nothing. Oh, I wish I could have been with them all the time. But, you know, Anchor is not just about going to concerts and having fun. You know, making a decision is really hard work. And after only three nights at the Reaperburn Festival, our jury had to deliver a judgment. Here's our big final. Let's welcome the, the jury! Yakoso! Emilia Torini! Anna Tanheim! James Minor! Tony Visconti! And Ray Pope! Are you glad you finally got to meet uh, Tony Visconti? <laughs> no, it's a major disappointment. Um, <laughs> never meet your heroes. And I must say, well, I mean, it's been un unbelievably difficult with him. But um, he's the most down-to-earth, wonderful man. And I've been in this business a long time. And he is, he's been with some of the greats. He's done some of the greatest music. And he is a lovely, lovely, lovely gentleman. We believe you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank okay, Tony, you can probably feel the suspense in the air right now. We're all dying to know who is going to be the winner of the first ever anchor. Well, I'm as nervous as they are. They were all terrific, and I know what they're going through at this moment. 
and it was very hard, a very hard decision, but one of you had everything that we were looking for, and that was the material, the band, the backing, the ability to uh, keep an audience enthralled, and uh, may I announce the winner now? I think you should. Look at their faces. They're dying to know. <laughs> okay. It's a hard thing to do, but the winner is Albin Lee Meldau. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, on behalf of the Reaperbahn Festival and the Anchor Awards, you are the first one to receive this award. Congratulations, you deserve it. <laughs> Congratulations yes. again. It's an honor to be here. I would like to say that music isn't a competition, but life is a struggle. And I am proud to be here. I worked hard for my stories. And I hope you appreciate them. But without the crew and the stories and the hardships, I would never be here. Thank you very much. That's a good. Thank you. It was a really hard decision. Just way too many great acts to choose from. It was really late. We were all just like, but uh, we kind of knew. Nice. So we weren't that nervous. He filled all the criteria. He was so broad as an artist. He is a super singer and songwriter. Money, money becoming. It kind of has to stick with me. So I kind of went with the, the impression like, oh my gosh. He's bizarre. He got me completely, and I'm so happy for him. But I wonder, is there someone new? Yes, I wonder, lying next to you, oh yeah, I wonder, is there someone new next to you? Now I know, now I know. Do you know what? I wish all eight nominees could have won. But I suppose in a way they did because they were here with us. And I'm sure after this their careers are going to soar. And we want to thank everybody who has made this night absolutely mind-blowing. The Reaper Band Festival, the artists, the jury, all the helping hands behind the scenes. I could, I could use some helping hands. Really, thank you. We can't wait to be back next year, can we? Definitely. I'm pleased that we were part of this fantastic evening. Thanks to everybody, thanks for the music, and to you at home. Thanks for watching. Anka, Anka loves, loves you! you.